Henry Collingwood adjusted his helmet, his fingers trembling slightly as the spacecraft descended toward the vibrant, alien landscape of Zarathia. The view from the window showcased an array of colorful flora and peculiar wildlife, unlike anything seen on Earth. Are you ready to meet the neighbors? A fellow scientist asked, half-jokingly. Henry managed to smile, concealing his nervousness. He had been chosen for this mission due to his expertise in xenobiology and his unique, hands-on approach to interacting with alien species. As they touched down, the ship's door opened, revealing a group of Zarathians waiting to greet them. The Zarathians were tall, with elongated limbs and skin that shimmered with a metallic hue, their eyes large and curious. Welcome, Earth Delegation. The Zarathian leader spoke, her voice a melodic hum. I am Zithra, and we are honored to have you here. Henry stepped forward, his heart racing with anticipation. Thank you, Zithra. We are excited to learn about your world and share our knowledge. The Zarathians led the delegation to their research facility, a sleek structure that blended seamlessly with the surrounding nature. Inside, Henry marveled at the advanced technology and the various alien creatures being studied. One particular creature caught his eye, a massive, vibrant insect like being with iridescent wings. That is a Loomis, Zirin, a young Zarathian researcher, explained. It's a fascinating species, but we maintain a safe distance due to its unpredictable behavior. Henry approached the Loomis, feeling an odd sense of connection. Ignoring the cautious warnings, he extended his hand slowly. The Loomis tilted its head, then moved closer, its antennae brushing against Henry's hand. A soft glow emanated from its body, surprising everyone in the room. You, you touched it, Zirin said, astonished. How did you know it wouldn't harm you? Henry shrugged, a grin spreading across his face. Sometimes you have to trust your instincts. Creatures can sense intentions. Over the next few days, Henry's unconventional methods continued to baffle and intrigue the Zarathians. He petted and interacted with various alien species, forming bonds that the Zarathians had never thought possible. His success began to win over some of the skeptical scientists, including Zirin, who started to adopt Henry's empathetic approach. Henry's bond with Zirin grew as they explored different alien habitats. Henry shared stories of his childhood, how he spent hours in the wilderness observing and befriending animals. He explained his belief that empathy was a universal language that transcended species. Their bond was tested when they encountered a predatory creature unlike any other. The beast, with its razor-sharp claws and piercing eyes, was known for its aggression. The Zarathians insisted on keeping a safe distance, but Henry felt compelled to approach it. Are you out of your mind? Zirin whispered, fear evident in his voice. Henry took a deep breath and stepped forward, extending his hand as he had with the Loomis. The creature growled, but Henry held his ground, speaking softly and projecting calmness. Slowly, the beast lowered its guard, allowing Henry to touch its rough skin. You truly have a gift, Zirin admitted, shaking his head in disbelief. I have never seen anything like this. Their success took a dramatic turn when Henry encountered a sentient creature that the Zarathians deemed too dangerous to approach. This being larger and more intelligent than the others had been isolated due to its unpredictable nature. Henry, however, saw potential in understanding and connecting with it. Why do you want to interact with it? Zirin asked, concern in his voice. Because it's misunderstood, Henry replied. If we can communicate, we might learn something valuable. Henry approached the creature, now named Loomis for its luminescent response to touch. He spent hours observing and slowly interacting with Loomis, earning its trust. The bond between them grew, demonstrating that even the most feared beings could respond to empathy and understanding. The breakthrough with Loomis inspired the Zarathians, but their progress was abruptly threatened by an unexpected crisis. Another alien species, the Drathos, launched an attack on the Zarathian outpost, seeing human presence as a threat. The Zarathians were overwhelmed, considering retreat. We can't just abandon this mission, Henry urged. We need to show them that we mean no harm. With Loomis by his side, 
Henry proposed a daring plan to use their bond to mediate peace. The Zarathians, though skeptical, agreed to give it a chance. Henry, Zirin, and Loomis embarked on a perilous journey to the Drathos territory, navigating natural hazards and facing skepticism from both sides. Their journey was fraught with danger, but Henry's unwavering belief in empathy and connection guided them. As they reached the Drathos territory, Henry felt a sense of determination. He knew that the success of their mission depended on their ability to communicate and understand each other. Henry stepped forward, his heart steady, ready to bridge the gap between species and show that empathy could transcend even the most formidable barriers. Henry's rapport with the Zarathians grew steadily as his unconventional methods continued to yield surprising results. His success with Loomis, the iridescent creature, had sparked a wave of curiosity and cautious admiration among the Zarathian scientists. The luminescent response from the creatures was seen as a breakthrough, prompting many to reconsider their distant and clinical approach to alien life. Henry and Zirin spent their days exploring various habitats on Zarathia, each more breathtaking than the last. In one particularly lush biome, teeming with bioluminescent flora and fauna, Henry demonstrated his unique approach to a skeptical group of scientists. He gently approached a serpentine creature, its scales shimmering in hues of green and blue. While the others watched with bated breath, Henry extended his hand, and the creature, after a moment of hesitation, wrapped itself around his arm in a gesture of trust. You see, Henry said, his voice calm and confident. These creatures respond to empathy and calmness. It's a universal language. Zirin, now an eager student of Henry's methods, nodded enthusiastically. I've never seen anything like this. Our protocols have always emphasized caution and distance. Henry smiled. Sometimes, it's worth taking a risk to build a connection. As they ventured deeper into the biome, they came across a secluded cave. Inside, they found a creature unlike any other they had encountered. It was large, with a muscular frame and eyes that seemed to reflect intelligence and awareness. The Zarathians identified it as a Varanix, known for its aggressive behavior and formidable strength. Despite their warnings, Henry felt an inexplicable urge to approach the creature. Are you sure about this? Zirin whispered, his voice filled with concern. Henry nodded, taking a deep breath. He stepped forward, his movements slow and deliberate. The Varanix watched him intently, its body tense. Henry extended his hand, speaking softly to the creature. The others held their breath, expecting the worst. To their astonishment, the Varanix lowered its head, allowing Henry to touch it. A moment of silent understanding passed between them. This is incredible, Zirin murmured. You're not just communicating. You're building trust. Henry's bond with the Varanix marked a turning point. News of his success spread quickly, and even the most skeptical Zarathian scientists began to show interest in his methods. However, their progress was abruptly interrupted by an urgent message. The Drathos, a neighboring species, had launched a surprise attack on the Zarathian outpost, mistaking the human presence for a hostile takeover. The delegation gathered in the command center, where the atmosphere was tense. Zithra, the Zarathian leader, addressed the group. We are facing an unprecedented threat. The Drathos believe we are here to conquer their territory. We must find a way to communicate our peaceful intentions. Henry stepped forward. Let me and Loomis go to them. We can show them that we're not a threat. Zithra hesitated. It's too dangerous. The Drathos are aggressive and distrustful. But that's exactly why we need to try. Henry insisted. If we can demonstrate empathy and understanding, we might prevent further conflict. After a tense deliberation, Zithra reluctantly agreed. Henry, Zirin, and Loomis set out on their mission, their path fraught with danger. They navigated through treacherous terrain, with Loomis using its luminescent abilities to guide them. The journey was arduous, but Henry's determination never wavered. As they approached the Drathos territory, they were confronted by a group of hostile warriors. Henry stepped forward, holding his hands up in a gesture of peace. Loomis, glowing softly, 
moved beside him. The Drathos leader, a towering figure with a fierce demeanor, eyed them suspiciously. Henry spoke, his voice steady. We come in peace. We are here to understand, not to conquer. The Drathos leader narrowed his eyes. Why should we believe you? Henry gestured to Loomis. This creature is a testament to our intentions. We seek to build connections, not destroy them. The Drathos leader hesitated, then motioned for them to follow. They were led to a grand hall, where the true negotiations would begin. Henry knew that their mission's success depended on their ability to convey sincerity and empathy. It was a daunting task, but one that he was ready to undertake, driven by the belief that understanding could overcome even the deepest divides. Henry, Zirin, and Loomis were led into a grand hall where the Drathos awaited. The imposing leader, with a hardened expression and a commanding presence, sat at the center of a semicircle formed by his advisors. The atmosphere was tense, and the air felt thick with the weight of unspoken threats. Henry took a deep breath, focusing on the task at hand. He stepped forward, addressing the Drathos leader. We come with peaceful intentions. Our presence here is to understand and collaborate, not to conquer. The leader's eyes narrowed. Words are easy to speak. Prove your sincerity. Henry gestured to Loomis, who glowed softly beside him. This creature is a testament to our approach. We believe in building bonds through empathy and understanding. The Drathos leader scrutinized Loomis, his skepticism evident. Show us how this empathy works. We have heard many promises before. Henry nodded and turned to Zirin. Let's demonstrate with Loomis first. Then we can proceed with one of their creatures. Zirin stepped forward, his voice steady despite the nerves. Loomis, can you help us communicate? Loomis responded with a gentle hum, its bioluminescence pulsing in a rhythmic pattern. The Drathos advisors leaned in, their curiosity peaked. Henry extended his hand towards Loomis, who touched it with a glowing appendage. The light intensified, creating a soft halo around them. This connection, Henry explained, is based on mutual trust. Loomis senses our intentions and responds in kind. Now, if you allow, we can try the same with one of your creatures. The Drathos leader hesitated before nodding to one of his advisors. A creature was brought forward its form more intimidating than Loomis. It had scales that reflected light in various shades, and its eyes glinted with a mix of curiosity and caution. Henry approached the creature slowly, his movements deliberate. He extended his hand, speaking in soothing tones. The creature watched him, its muscles tensed. After a few moments, it stepped forward and nudged Henry's hand, a tentative but promising gesture. The room was silent, the significance of the moment clear to everyone present. The Drathos leader finally spoke. You have demonstrated your method, but our concerns go beyond individual connections. We fear for our territory and resources. Henry met the leader's gaze. We understand your fears, but we believe that cooperation can lead to benefits for all parties involved. We are willing to share our knowledge and resources to ensure mutual growth. The leader considered this his expression unreadable. And what guarantees can you offer that we will not be betrayed? Zirin stepped in, his voice firm. Our presence here itself is a risk. We have no weapons, only our desire to communicate. Let this be a gesture of our goodwill. The Drathos leader seemed to weigh these words carefully. After what felt like an eternity, he nodded. We will consider your offer, but know this, human. Our trust must be earned not just declared. Henry nodded. We wouldn't have it any other way. We are here to prove our intentions through actions, not just words. The meeting ended with a tentative understanding. As they were escorted out of the hall, Zirin turned to Henry. That went better than I expected, but we still have much to prove. Henry smiled, though the weight of their mission still loomed large. One step at a time, we've planted the seed of trust. Now we need to nurture it. Their return journey to the Zarathian outpost was filled with quiet contemplation. Loomis floated alongside them, its glow a comforting presence in the darkness. Zirin broke the silence. 
What's our next move? Henry thought for a moment. We need to gather more data on the Drathos, understand their needs and fears better, and we must show them tangible benefits of our cooperation. Zirin nodded. Agreed. I'll start analyzing the information we have and see what we can offer that aligns with their interests. Back at the outpost, the atmosphere was a mix of relief and anticipation. Zithra met them with a hopeful look. How did it go? We've made initial progress, Henry replied. They're willing to consider cooperation, but we have to prove our sincerity. Zithra nodded. That's more than we could have hoped for. We'll support you in any way we can. Over the next few days, the team worked tirelessly to gather data and formulate a plan. They studied the Drathos ecosystem, looking for ways to demonstrate the benefits of collaboration. Henry and Zirin spent hours in discussion, refining their approach. The breakthrough came when they discovered a resource on Zerathia that could help stabilize the Drathos' declining habitats. With this knowledge, they prepared for another meeting, this time with concrete solutions in hand. Henry, Zirin, and Loomis returned to the Drathos' territory carrying with them a comprehensive plan to address the ecological imbalance affecting the Drathos homeland. As they approached the Grand Hall, the Drathos leader awaited them with a wary expression, flanked by his advisors. Henry stepped forward confidently. We have identified a resource on Zerathia that can stabilize your habitats. It's a unique mineral that enhances soil fertility and strengthens plant growth. The Drathos leader's eyes narrowed. Why should we trust this solution? We have seen many promises fail. Henry gestured to Zirin, who produced a small vial containing the mineral. This is not just a promise. It's a proven element that we have already tested on Zerathia's ecosystems. We're offering to share it with you, along with the knowledge to use it effectively. The leader took the vial, examining it closely. And what do you expect in return? Nothing immediate, Henry replied. We believe that mutual cooperation will benefit both our species in the long run. This is about building trust and working together for a better future. The Drathos leader seemed to ponder this for a moment. Your approach is unconventional, but we are willing to see its effects. You will accompany us to one of our affected regions and demonstrate this solution. Henry nodded. Agreed. We're ready to start immediately. The group set out to a desolate part of the Drathos territory. The land was barren, with sparse vegetation struggling to survive. Henry and Zirin got to work, spreading the mineral and explaining its application to the Drathos. As they worked, Henry struck up a conversation with the Drathos leader. What caused the decline in your ecosystem? The leader sighed. Years of industrial expansion without regard for environmental impact. By the time we realized the damage, it was almost too late. Henry nodded thoughtfully. We had similar challenges on Earth. It took us a long time to understand the importance of sustainability. But it's never too late to make a change. Over the next few days, they monitored the land, watching as the soil began to show signs of improvement. Plants that had been withering started to regain their strength, and new shoots emerged from the ground. The Drathos, Witnessing the transformation, began to look at Henry and his team with newfound respect. This is remarkable, the Drathos leader admitted. Your solution works. It's a small step, Henry replied, but it's the beginning of something larger. Together, we can restore more of your land and ensure it remains healthy for future generations. The Drathos leader extended his hand to Henry. You have earned our trust. We are willing to enter into a cooperative agreement with your people. Henry shook his hand firmly. Thank you. This is the start of a partnership that will benefit both our species. With the initial success in the Drathos territory, Henry and Zirin returned to the Zerathian outpost to report their progress. Zithra greeted them with a mixture of relief and excitement. Your efforts have paid off. The Drathos are willing to work with us. Henry smiled. It's a significant achievement, but we need to continue our efforts to ensure lasting peace and cooperation. As the days passed, the alliance between the Zarathians, Drathos, and humans grew stronger. Collaborative projects flourished, with scientists from all three species working together to share knowledge and resources. 
Loomis became a symbol of this unity, its glowing presence a constant reminder of what empathy and understanding could achieve. Zirin approached Henry one evening as they observed the bustling research facility. I never imagined we could accomplish so much in such a short time. Your methods have changed the way we approach everything. Henry looked at his friend, gratitude evident in his eyes. It's not just my methods. It's the willingness of everyone to embrace something new and to believe in the possibility of a better future. As they stood there, reflecting on their journey, a communication came in from Earth. The message was one of commendation and support, acknowledging the groundbreaking work being done on Zarathia. Henry addressed the gathered scientists and researchers. We've made incredible progress, but our work is far from over. Let's continue to push boundaries, to learn from each other, and to build a future where all species can thrive together. The crowd erupted in applause, their spirits lifted by the accomplishments and the promise of what lay ahead. The Alliance had not only brought peace, but had also opened up endless possibilities for exploration and growth. In the following weeks, the joint efforts led to numerous breakthroughs in environmental restoration, technological innovation, and cultural exchange. The relationships forged through their cooperation laid the foundation for a new era of interspecies collaboration. As Henry looked out over the transformed landscape, he felt a deep sense of fulfillment. The journey had been challenging, but the results spoke for themselves. Unity and understanding had triumphed, paving the way for a future where diverse beings could live and thrive together, sharing knowledge and nurturing the worlds they called home.